I guess at first I kind of was against that statement, but now I'm starting to kind of agree. Hello and welcome back to Asia Now. My name is Alex and in this video I'll tell you about did the Philippines National Police Chief assist Alice Guo in her escape? Was the Pangasinan mayor involved in a romantic relationship with Alice Guo? And is there a secret child? 30 tourists injured on a bus, baby swaps, plus much more, beginning with our exchange peso to USD. Right now, one US dollar equal to 55.8. The US dollar struggling a bit to stay above 56 pesos right now. Let's jump into our main story, but first, if you're new to the channel, we're very close to 5,000 subscribers. Hit that subscribe button, hit that like button. Starting with our main story, Alice Go and some of her accomplices face the Senate once again today, and most of our stories today is gonna to be involving Alice Guo. Here's our main one. Former Philippines National Police Chief may be linked to the escape of former Bam Bam Mayor Alice Guo, according to intelligence shared during Senate hearing. Alice Guo, who is involved in various criminal allegations of trafficking and money laundering, reportedly has ties to the Philippines offshore gaming operators. A retired PNP general mentioned rumors of Paola, bribe from Guo, with a former PNP chief allegedly implicated in her escape. Senator Risa Antiveros emphasized the seriousness of the suggestion that Pogo money might have influenced high-level government officials. Senator Bato De La Rosa, a former PNP chief, expressed concern about the accusations but denied any involvement. Guo denied knowing De La Rosa and only recognized him from Senate appearances. The hearing continues to investigate her activity. Uh, this rumor has been going around for a while, not just with this case, many cases in the Philippines. A lot of people, expats and locals, anytime you read anything about the Philippines government, many people say there are bribes and corruption, just like any other government, and stuff like this definitely does impact that whole image of a country's government. One more thing I want to mention, a concern, Come on, of course, the, the mayor of a place is supposedly a Chinese spy. So of course, stuff like bribes are gonna affect uh, people of high level positions. And generally, you don't bribe somebody in a lower position anyway. So I think that statement, the fact that it's serious because it can affect high level positions, of course, that should be like a, almost like a, a given. Regardless, a really big accusation towards an ex-chief uh, himself, who is obviously going to deny these claims. Let's see what happens at the end of it. But let's go on to a little bit more detail, a little bit more juicier detail regarding Alice Guo and another mayor. By the way, I'm probably gonna butcher a lot of these names, so please forgive me. Rumors of Pangasinan Mayor Lasaldo Kalugar regarding his alleged romantic relationship and business dealings with dismissed Bam Bam Tarlac -like Mayor Alice Guo surfaced during the hearing. Kalugai faced questioning from senators during a Senate committee inquiry where he repeatedly maintained that he and Guo were just friends. However, he admitted to giving Guo a bouquet of flowers for Valentine's Day, claiming it was a friendly gesture. Mm -hmm. Kalugai also denied having any business partnerships with Guo, despite evidence presented by Senator Hantiveros showing several companies allegedly linked to them. Guo had previously denied having a romantic relationship and business partnership with Kalugai. Okay, things are heating up in regards to Alice Go and that mayor. I mean, come on, bro. I don't even give a bouquet of flowers to my significant other, my girlfriend, my side chicks. Ain't nobody getting a bouquet from me unless it's romantic. No friends, at least. Anyways, unless you're a 12 year old girl or something giving bouquets to each other, I just don't buy it. But that's just my personal opinion. I guess if I had to make, I feel like they probably were involved to some degree, at some level, at some point even if it was just a short amount of time. But Guo was even denying any kind of business dealings, even though there's apparent evidence of that. Let's go on to our next story, which kind of actually goes hand in hand with this one. Senate investigation into Philippines offshore gaming operators, which has uncovered personal details about dismissed Bam Bam Tarlac Mary Alice Guo, real name Guo Hua Ping, and her alleged relationship with Swal Pangasinan Mayor Loseldo Dong Kalugai. During the Senate hearing, panel head Senator Hantiveros presented information suggesting that Guo and Kalugai may have had a child together. However, Kalugai's executive assistant, Cheryl Medina, vehemently denied this claim. The investigation also revealed that Medina had helped Guo staff notarize her counter affidavit on a trafficking complaint lodged against her at the Department of Justice even though Guo had already fled the country in July. Secret Love Child is next on this drama that's going on. There's going to be so many different takes and opinions regarding what information has come out. And of course, as the days and weeks go on, we're gonna find out a lot more. So if there's a child, of course, we feel bad for any kind of children. They are innocent. 
to be caught up in this kind of uh, drama and your parents doing all these supposedly illegal stuff. So yeah, if there's a kid, I guess it's going to be more difficult to try to hide that and cover that up. I don't think you can have a child without a relationship, right? <laughs> I mean, I'm just kidding. Regardless, leave your thoughts down below. Let me know what's going on in your brain. What are your thoughts so far regarding everything that's come out from the Senate hearing of Alice Guo and regarding what she did? If you take a time to write it, I'll take a time to respond. Speaking of babies, let's go on and take a look at our next story in Thailand. In a hospital in Samusakon, Thailand, where two newborn babies were accidentally swapped, the hospital has admitted the mix-up and has agreed to compensate the two families involved. The babies were sent to a special unit for treatment of an infection, and during this time, their wristbands were cut and incorrectly put back on, leading to the mix-up. The Thai parents noticed the significant difference in the physical features of the baby they brought home, prompting them to return to the hospital. A DNA test confirmed that the baby they had was not theirs. The hospital has agreed to provide free medical services for both children as compensation. Uh, yeah, the least you could do trying to give my baby away to somebody else. I don't have any kids, but if something ever happened to my dog, I don't know what I'll do. But this kind of stuff I thought was just in movies, right? I grew up watching like these baby swap movies and they grew up to become different people. Regardless, I really want to know what would you do in that case? Like imagine, I'm glad it happened really quickly after they noticed, but imagine raising a child, right? Like uh, if it's two or three or even older before you realize there was a baby swap, how would you really react? Would you return the baby? I mean, now you like took care of this baby. Uh, at which point does it become your kid, right? Like, a, yeah, something to really think about. Leave your thoughts down below. Let me know what would you do if your baby got swapped with somebody else's. On a more serious note, the Philippines remains the most dangerous country in Asia for land and environmental defenders, accounting for 68% of the recorded uh, offings and enforced disappearances in the region in 2023, the Watchdog Global Witness found. That is definitely alarming. You know, that's one thing about freedom of speech. Like, I'm very privileged to be here talking to you guys, and uh, but not a lot of people, depending on where they come from, and what they're speaking about, have that privilege. And even myself, as you guys can tell, a lot of times I beep or blank or say some stuff in a weird way because YouTube doesn't allow me to have complete free speech. And I understand there's a lot of guidelines, but regardless of that, uh, I really admire people that stand for something, whether it's the environment, doesn't matter what the cause is, as long as it's not hurting somebody, of course, but it really shows a lot of courage, dedication, and bravery to stand up against the entire like system uh, of something you're against, basically. In this case, a lot of people speaking about the environment. And the Philippines, unfortunately, is not really known for its like environmental friendliness, let's say when we're talking about pollution and everything else that goes on there. But 68% is a lot. Imagine from all the Asian countries, you are 68% of that problem essentially. But 68% was the first time I heard of that stat. And next, I know this is not here in Asia, but I really want to talk about it because I think it affects anyone that travels. 30 tourists, including five Mexicans and six Italians were severely injured in Peru on Monday when their bus crashed. The driver lost control and the bus plunged off the zigzag and mountain road that connects the Machu Picchu tourist spot to the town of Agus Calientes falling some 15 meters, that's 50 feet down. Uh, once again, I apologize for all the names I've mispronounced during this whole show or any other show. When you're traveling, a lot of times you put your safety into someone else's hands. And I know that for personally, I've never been to Machu Picchu. I plan on going at some point, but who knows by the time I get there, unfortunately, we don't know what the road conditions, what, whether they're going to close off the site. But I know it's really difficult getting there. And there's, I think like a limit on how many people can go per day. Regardless, I hope uh, more safety measures get put in place. But my point was sometimes it's out of your control. I know it's a risk you take whenever you travel. And in this case, we don't know if the bus driver simply is going too fast, whether they're taking some, some medication, some alcohol, because oftentimes they're very underpaid. They take drugs or anything to stay awake. The more trips they make up and down, the more money they get. Not specifically to Machu Picchu, but anywhere in the world when you're working in these tourist spots. Safety is not always a priority. I hope they're all uh, okay. And I don't want to end on like a sour note, but it's just something that kind of crossed my mind. And I hope that places like this keep open and they try to actually build some I don't know if you can build a wider road against a mountain or whatever, but regardless, I thought it was something worth noting and sharing with you guys. This brings me to our segment yesterday today where I read some of the most popular comments regarding our previous video. Very surprisingly, the most liked comment was from Preston Phelps who says, why does the Philippines let Chinese into their country? Well, firstly, I don't think you can tell who's a criminal and who isn't when they first come to your country. Unless this is referring to what's going on in the South China Sea regarding the Philippines 
being bullied by China repeatedly, even just recently, once again, the Coast Guard and the actions. I'm not going to get into all that. I understand from that perspective, right? Why bring national of a country you're in dispute right now into a country? I guess at first I kind of was against that statement, but now I'm starting to kind of agree. Anyways, leave your thoughts down below. Edgar says, as an American expat living in the Philippines and passing, I see a lot of Chinese and Indian in Cebu. I wonder at times if they're tourists or in the Philippines illegally. And don't worry, says, two very old uh, witticisms, what is that, <laughs> are never judge a book by its cover. And if you cannot say anything nice, don't say anything at all. Harry Roque always appeared to me suspect of something, but I said nothing. Okay, very interesting. And that's it for this video. If you guys enjoyed it, take a second out of your day. If you have not yet, subscribe to the channel. Click that little thumbs up button. Hit that uh, share button if you want. And that's basically it. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Bye.